In this third installment of my conversation with Bruce Lipton, he F jokes about how eating, if we stop eating, that would be one of the things that can extend life. And he explains that in more detail, a little bit tongue in cheek, but there's some validity to the messages that he gives here. So enjoy. Eating food is shortening our life. Eating food? I go, yeah, you know why? When you burn fuel, you also create toxic byproducts. So let's say in the car, I burn the gasoline. I say, well, then don't breathe the exhaust. The exhaust is a toxic byproduct. And I go, eating food has a toxic byproduct called free radicals. Free radicals are charged ions that can punch holes in the cell. And when you punch holes in the cell, you can kill the cells. So the more food you eat, the more free radicals you make, the more free radicals, the more cells you kill. And guess what? There comes a point where uh, you're killing a lot of cells because the amount of food is way beyond what humans need. In a laboratory, what they found out was this. Let's say rats. When I grew rats in the lab, we had a box and then we had a little grill over the box. And then we put all the rat pellets so that they could eat. So we didn't give them, here's your breakfast pellet and here's your dinner pellet. No, put all the pellets in there. Let them eat what they want. They found out that actually, if they stopped giving them that much food, but actually gave them just the subsistence amount, just necessary, they doubled the lifespan of the animals. And I said, well, did that just work with rats? I said, no, it worked with dogs, it worked with monkeys, and now we have information that also works with humans. We are eating way too much food, and the toxic byproduct of our diet is in the end killing us, uh, and we should be eating subsistence. Mm -hmm. But we're programmed to eat. <laughs> yes, when you were a kid, eat breakfast. That's the most important meal of the day. And lunch is a great place for a social hangout and eat some food. And dinner is what you're waiting for when you came home. And we focus on this. And I go, we didn't need to eat that much food. And yet now, guess what? We supersize it. And I go, geez, <laughs> now, now you're killing us even faster. A supersized meal. Uh, the idea was to go the other way. Right. Subsistence. Take it down. Reduce it down. And the diet that we eat is terrible. Uh, it's terrible because it has too many carbohydrates in it. Carbohydrates were not a mainstay of early humans. They were the con a consequence of agriculture uh, uh we never ate that many carbs carbs are uh, pretty much damn destructive at some point the amount that we eat yes Stephen. bruce um a question i i saw a study that said it's not only the reduction in overall intake but it's the distribution of how you eat it so that if you have periods of non-eating that works better than if you distri distribute 60 percent diet throughout the day is that your yes, yeah. Uh, apparently, the, this is a very important part of the whole program is fasting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I say, why? I say, look, human physiology did not develop this year. <laughs> human physiology is a million years ago. I go, well, what does that mean? I say, well, there was no farming and you could get whatever food you could find. And so that's why they didn't have lots of, they didn't sit down with a Thanksgiving dinner anywhere. They were lucky to get some berries and something they could put in their face. So we grew up in a world with a very small dietary support. And then once agriculture came in, then food was unlimited. And the system, now remember before agriculture, if you could find food, you would eat it anywhere. Why? because you never know when you're going to find it again. So there was the idea was if food was available, eat it because you don't know if you're going to get another meal. In today's world, we're still driven by the same fact, but the food is available, you know, all day long, all year long. And it's like, oh, well, then the drive is we're still eating, but there was no need now because there was no shortage of the food like it was when we created our original physiology. So uh this is a, a overkill we're killing ourselves on that okay mm -hmm. so uh that becomes another important part of the longevity is how much food we're eating how much our telomeres are growing and things like this so the important understanding is we are shortening our lifespan with our behavior yeah. not our genetics <laughs> and i say because if it was genetics then we're the victim 
But I said, no, this is environment. We're the creators. Yeah. And if we understand this, then what we're saying is to save ourselves and the planet right. Right. is to cut down the food intake and extend your life. And when people start to do this, guess what? All the diseases uh, that we are really facing start to all disappear. People think diseases are due to genes. Them, a simple fact, less than 1% of disease is connected to genes. I go, where's the disease coming from? I go, 90% of the disease coming from is stress. <laughs> and I say, that's the kind of, the stress can shorten your life. That's where the problem comes from. And stress uh, is debilitating.